So today I want us to look again at 1 Corinthians 12, where we started off this series a couple of weeks ago. And I want to share some principles, and I want us to look at some of these gifts together. 1 Corinthians 12. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when we were, that when you were pagans, rather, Somehow or another, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. And therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says that Jesus be cursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. And there are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. And there are different kinds of workings, but... In all of them, in everyone, is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another miraculous powers to another prophecy to another distinguishing between spirits to another speaking in different kinds of tongues and to still another the interpretation of tongues and all of these are the work of the one and the same spirit and he distributes them to each one just as he determines and I I just want to share with you this morning about nurturing and developing your spiritual gifts father thank you Thank you for this time, Lord, in your presence around your word. And God, we thank you that your word instructs us and shows us how we can access these gifts and grow in these gifts and and engage in these gifts and develop these gifts and serve you with these gifts as a body. That we would truly be that city on a hill. That we would truly be that place, Lord, that would bring you glory. All that is in your heart, Father, we pray that you'd grace us and bless us now as we look at your word in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Amen. So let's talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. One of the things I I love to do uh, at least once a year, uh, Heather and I like to go to the symphony. And we like to go, and and, and Heather uh, was at UBC studying music, so she introduced me to the beauty of the symphony. Before that, for me, it was just like rock concerts, basically. (laughs) But she cultured me, helped me with that. But one of the things I love about the symphony is if you ever get to go, is when you first walk in, it doesn't sound that great because everybody's tuning their instruments and it sounds like uh, a number of cats that are, are, are in a fight or something like that. But as soon as the conductor comes to the stage, and he just starts everything off and there's that pause. And then the symphony plays together and there's beauty, there's music, it's, it's, it's all the instruments working together in the way that they were fashioned, each one serving the greater, serving even one another, taking turns, pauses, breathing, and beauty and art flows out of the symphony. Now, in Corinth, as we looked at a couple of weeks ago, the church was like a symphony out of tune. Let's say that. They were like a a symphony that... They had the right instruments, so they had some of these things that were working together, but they needed Paul to come in like a bit of a conductor to say, okay, let's get in tune here. They had charisma, but they lacked character and love in the operation of the gifts of the Spirit that God had given to this church. And God gives gifts to every church. And we talked about that last week, how God gives gifts to all of us, that all of us have gifts that God gives us. And gifts are different than natural talents, although I believe they can work with our natural talents, but God gives us gifts and places us in a body. And This is the most supernatural and beautiful thing about the way that God has designed his church. And all of us have these gifts and we're we're to stir them up. Paul said to Timothy, we're to stir up and identify these gifts and to grow in these gifts. And, And I don't want anybody to disqualify it themselves today and say, well, I don't know if I'm not gifted or if I have anything to offer. I'm telling you, you do. And I want to call that out of you. You yourself are a gift to this church. And so I want us to, as a church, I believe what the spirit is doing is he's maturing us right now. I I believe we're in a season of, of God calling us deeper. And, and as we 
move forward in God's vision for First Assembly. Some people say, well, do you want a big church? Not necessarily because that's a lot of extra work for us, but I want big people. And God, it's up to God how many numbers. It's, it's up to the Lord how many people sit in seats at First Assembly, but my prayer is that God would grow us up as big people in him, that we would be mature, that we would be strong, that we would know our God, that we would know the Holy Spirit personally with greater depth. And Friends, there's always more for us to grow in the Spirit. There's always more for us to discover our gifts, grow in, in, in our relationship with the Holy Spirit himself. And so we're, we must grow up in, the, in these gifts that God has given us so that the church can be strong and effective. Well, like the church in Corinth, some churches today have had a hard time with spiritual gifts. And this is just the reality. And even in our Pentecostal and charismatic circles, sometimes the, the gifts have been extreme or abused in different ways. And, and, and on one hand, people, it, it gets out of balance. And so it kind of gets weird. And so people are like, well, let's just, you know, stay away from the gifts. And it's not because God is weird, friends. It's because people are weird, okay? <laughs> let's, just, let's just be real about that. It's not, you can't just blame God for everything that weird that happens. There's, people are strange. Um, so on one hand, people just kind of shy away because they're like, I don't want to get into weirdness. Well, I don't want to get into weirdness either, but I want all that God has for me. And on the other hand, then some churches, they just completely ignore it. Or some people think, well, the gifts aren't even for today, which I believe is, is not correct teaching at all. But the key is to get a biblical understanding. So let's look at some principles we see in our text today. I want to help us with this so that we can see these principles. And then I want us to look at some of these spiritual gifts. First of all, the, the priority of gifts. This is what Paul is talking to the church about. He says, now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. In other translations say, I don't want you to be ignorant about this, uninformed about these gifts. Paul wants them to, to not just be ignorant. The, the word here in the original language is the word where we get agnostic from. And so it's kind of like, well, if, if God wants to give me gifts, maybe there's gifts. I don't know if there's gifts. It's kind of this aloof, agnostic view of, I don't know if there are gifts anyway. It's, it's not where Paul wants them to be. He wants them to be informed. You see, it was a very spiritual culture, and these Corinthians were being led astray in their former days by mute idols. And so Paul is saying that unlike these powerless and these mute idols uh, he, he's, that you once served, I, I'm calling you to something greater. I'm calling you to a Holy Spirit who speaks. You, you used to go to these idols and do all these things to, to try to find some sense of spirituality, but there is a Holy Spirit who has gifts for you. And, and I, I want you to, to understand what these gifts are and to use them in such a way that would glorify God. You see, the Holy Spirit is real and he's active and he is speaking. Unlike these mute idols who could not speak at all, the Holy Spirit is speaking to this church and moving in you. And you don't have to run to some pagan temple. You are the temple. And, and the Spirit is in you and, and wanting to... So he's like, I don't want you to just ignore this, guys. This is a priority. These gifts are important. And I want to say to us, First Assembly, these gifts are important for us as a body. This is important for us in our lives to, to not just say, oh, I'm just going to ignore them. And Paul is saying these gifts are important. Second thing is the, the, the provision, the provision of these gifts. I, I love this here because Paul talks about the, the provision. He says, there are different kinds of gifts in the same spirit who distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of workings, but in all the same God. So you see here, it's really neat because you see the Trinity here. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit, the Holy Spirit. So the spirit of God gives us these gifts. And there are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. So these gifts of service then, the, the gifts that Jesus gifts to the church, which we're going to look at next week in Ephesians 4, the serving gifts, these gifts that Jesus gives to the church, and then there are different kinds of workings. But in all of them, in every one of them, the same God at work. You see the Trinity. So Paul is saying, it's God, it's the Father, it's the Son, it's the Spirit, it's all of God giving you all that he has to build the church. And you can be encouraged by this. And God has provided you with these gifts, and he wants you to discover them and develop them and grow in them and, and utilize them and stir them up in the body. 
You know, sometimes we maybe think about the gifts that God gives to a church, and it's like Christmas morning, and maybe the child comes downstairs, and there's gifts under the tree, and the child picks up this beautiful gift and finds their name, and they're, oh, this is so exciting, mom and dad, thank you for this gift, and they just sit there on the couch, and the parents are saying, well, open it, open it. Well, I just love the wrapping paper. It's so beautiful. I'm just going to keep it the way it is, and thank you very much, and they take the gift, and they put it in their room, and they still don't open it, but they just love this gift, and the parents are just longing for them, saying, I want you to open this gift, and this is, this is the provision, because the parent is saying, I want to provide for you something that is so beautiful, and, and this is what Paul is getting at. It's, it's God's, all of God is giving you all of these gifts, to, to build up the church and to build up what he is doing on earth and so that you could flourish personally and so that the church could be a place that many more people would find salvation. So these, this provision and then the purpose, and we talked about that last week, the purpose of these gifts, that the Spirit has given these gifts for the common good. These gifts are not just for me or you to, to walk around and say, look how gifted I am. Look at how great of a gifted, talented person I am. They're, they're, they're to serve. That the gifts God gives us are for others. That the, the gifts he gives us are, are, are for us to utilize and to, to use the purpose of these gifts. Or they're, they're, their gifts are like a toolbox that God gives us. Uh, they're, they're not toys for us to play with, but they're tools for us to utilize to build up the church. I was, just the other week, a few weeks ago, we were replacing our refrigerator because not only after 10 years do you get to celebrate as a pastor 10 years, but after 10 years, your fridge dies. It's just built into the program. So I don't know how that works, but so we're getting, we're in the 10-year appliance season in our home. And uh, so I was behind the refrigerator and I was trying to pull it out and disconnect the water line and I had a pair of pliers and I, I just, I was so frustrated. I, 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 I can't believe I'm going to have to call a professional to help me uh, un, un, you know, undo my water line from the river. And so Heather just kind of walks over. She goes, well, what are you? I said, I got a pair of pliers. She goes, how about a wrench? And I took the wrench and I, it fit perfectly. It was incredible. <laughs> it was the right tool. And the, and, and the purpose of the gifts are that God gives us these gifts and he gives us the gifts we need in the moment. And so I want us to all be open to so many different... See, I don't know if I'm gifted that way. Just be open because the Holy Spirit chooses the diversity of where he wants to use these gifts. And it's really about us just being open and available. I remember being on staff at a church uh, one time uh, years ago, and then I transitioned and went to another church. And then in that new church, I found like I'm not using the same gifts because the need in that body was different. And there were new gifts that I was operating in. And so the purpose of the gifts are for serving the body, the common good to give away. And then the practice, let's look at these. Now each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. So the word, the word here is really, it's, it's about this, this manifestation. Paul uses this word manifestation or the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. It's the workings. It's, it's, uh, he says at the top of the chapter, these are, are the spirituals. Or, or there's, a spiritual, there's spiritual things I want you to not be unaware of these spiritual things. And these spiritual things are the way that the Holy Spirit works, the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Now, to manifest makes, it means to make it known. It's, al- it's already there, but the, the manifestation is that now you can see it. And I just want to say that the Holy Spirit, is, he's already here. He's already in you and moving amongst us. But the manifestation is now we can see glimpses now we can see it's been made known how god is working and that's how these gifts operate they're manifestations they are demonstrations of how the holy spirit is at work in us so he lists nine here and in romans 12 last week we looked at the number of gifts as well in ephesians we're going to look at some more gifts gifts that are listed there next week and so most people think there's like 20 some people say 25 gifts uh, that we can find in the Bible. Peter Wagner years ago said there were 27 spiritual gifts. And I think the point is, is that rather than trying to count them, there are lists that help us. But I think the reality of gifts are is that the Holy Spirit is going to work in you. These are some of the, the main ones and the ways they function that Paul helps us with here. But that there are so many gifts, maybe some that aren't even lift, listed. Um, 
you know, our, our worship team, I, I, you know, they're, they're, they're gifted. There's gifts and it's more than just talent. There's anointing that comes with it. It's not just song leading, it's worship. It, so there's a lot of gifts in the body of Christ. But let's look at some of these gifts here for the common good. So the first one is the word of wisdom. And so the word of wisdom is, wisdom is a special, it's a special wisdom for a a particular situation. And natural wisdom is one thing, and you get wise by reading scripture and wise by being around wise people. But do you know that God will give you a gift of wisdom in the moment that you need it? And I've seen this operate in different ways, and I've seen people around me and leadership sometimes just to say something in a moment where it's just like, that was clearly the Lord that gave us to that. Jesus moved in a word of wisdom when the Pharisees came to try to trap him and say, Jesus, should we pay taxes? And he said, well, give me a coin. Whose picture is on that coin? And they said, well, it's Caesar. And Jesus, this was, this was a word of wisdom where he said, well, just give to Caesar what is Caesar's. It was the spirit of God working through Jesus it's in this word of wisdom. I remember there was a time, my dad told me this story. He was a church planter. And when I was a kid, we were renting a school gym, but they wanted to buy property. And there was a piece of property right near that school gym. And my dad would go and he would pray and he would say, I believe this is the right property. It was for sale. But the owner would not sell it to him. He said, I don't want to sell it to a church. So he prayed, he fasted, he didn't know, you know, he kept going back. He said, are you sure you won't sell us this property? He went one more time. The Lord just said, go one more time and ask him. And so as he was walking up to the man to have the conversation, the Holy Spirit whispered in his heart and he said, tell them that you want to build a school with the church. And so he walked up to the man. He says, I I still want to, I'm interested in buying this property. He says, I told you for the last time, I'm not selling it to any church. He says, but we want to build a school with it. And the man looked at him and he said, okay, I'll sell you the property. It was the word of wisdom in the moment. And you know that the whole time my dad was pastoring that church, they never did build a school. (laughs) But the pastor that followed him built one of the biggest Christian schools in the Pacific Northwest, in the Seattle area. So the church still did build a school. It was in God's heart. And it was a word of wisdom of what would touch this man's heart. So the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, it's a special knowledge. There's no natural way of knowing, and this would be similar. And let me just say about the gifts too, they all kind of bleed together. So sometimes you go, is that wisdom or knowledge? It could be wisdom and knowledge working together. Is that prophecy or faith? Is that healing or faith? These things can blend together. But Paul helps us just to kind of understand how the spirit manifests. And then the word of knowledge is the special knowledge for healing, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, the woman at the well, Jesus moved in this word of knowledge where, where he said, go get your husband. And she says, well, I, I don't have a husband. He's like, you're right, you had five. And so he knows stuff about her. And the one that you're living with right now, she's not your husband. So he's like, yeah, I got you, you're right? It, it, but what happened was that cracked something open in the heart of this, Samar- this woman at the well. And so this word of knowledge, it's, it's, it's something that God gives you that there's no natural way of knowing and I've seen this happen many times in services or gatherings where somebody would have a word. And so I want you to be open to that as you're praying and, 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 to, and just to step out. And, and sometimes people think when they move in gifts, whether it be word of knowledge or prophecy or whatever, they, they have to put on a King James accent. They're like, well, the Lord saith unto thee. It's like, no, that's just weird. But just, you could just say, I just kind of feel this. Can we just test this together? This might be the Holy Spirit. Can I just offer this to you? And if you're wrong, you're wrong. But the more that you operate in that gift, the more you step out in it, then the Holy Spirit helps you grow and develop in that gift. The gift of faith. This is God's gift of faith for the moment, for the situation. This is more than just the faith that God gives us. God gives us all a measure of faith, but the gift of faith is like, I believe it. It's like we have the faith of God for that moment. This gift of faith. In Acts chapter 3, Peter commanded that lame man at the temple gate at the gate beautiful he he said silver and gold i don't have but what i do have i I, I know rise up get up and walk and it was that it was god's faith in that moment for that miracle to flow and god can give us the gift of faith for the moment 
I remember when we were, as a governing council a couple of years ago, now a few years ago, we were out in Banff for our, our retreat, and we were looking at the potential uh, of selling the property that we had to buy new property that was already offered to somebody else, a contract had already been written up to somebody else, and, uh, and we wanted to plant a South Campus in Seton in the movie theater. And so we went to that governing council retreat, and we went and prayed up and fasted, and, and, and we said, we're going to set our hearts to pray and to fast into this. But in that governing council retreat, I remember when, when it was just like, not just me, but there were others in the room where we're like, should we, should we buy this 49.5 acres in the south of Calgary if it opens up? And there was like a unanimous gift of faith in the room. We were like, God, if, if you open that up, we're going to step into it wholeheartedly. And it was a gift of faith that just was like there. And it was like, it was like we had the faith of God. And do you know that God provided so supernaturally and has continued to provide in incredible ways as we stepped into that and we see the growth of the Seton campus and we see that, that property just beginning to move forward. And, and it, it was a gift of faith in the moment. And so be open to God putting faith in your heart that is supernatural, that is his faith for that moment. Some of you need to have a gift of faith come upon you for your family, for your business, for some things that are going and just say, God, I want to just, I want all of that gift. You can ask and you can seek and you can desire gifts. And, And Paul calls us to seek gifts and to earnestly desire these gifts. So say, Lord, could you just give me a gift of faith for this? And you watch what the Holy Spirit will do in every situation. Then there's gifts of healings. You see, God loves to touch people. It's God's heart to heal. We know this because first mention of healing by Jesus is when he saw that man with leprosy. And the man with leprosy said, Jesus, if you're willing, make me whole. And Jesus, his words, he spoke out. First mention on healing was, I am willing. Now, healing is a mystery. We don't always understand everything about it, but... The, the word here is plural, gifts of healings. And so there's, that speaks to there's different kinds of healings. There's, there's emotional healing, there's mental healing, there's physical healing, there's, there's instantaneous healing, there's progressive healing at times. Sometimes people are healed progressively. Where Jesus healed that man who was blind and when he first touched him, he could see a little bit. He said, I see only partially, I see men as trees. And then Jesus touched him again, and there was a full healing. Sometimes we can, we can move in partial healing. There's different gifts of healings. There's, there's not one kind of healing. There's multiple kinds of healings. Sometimes there are healings that take place through natural ways or medicine or common grace, where God allows doctors and nurses. And how many are thankful for our doctors and nurses that are part of this congregation? Because you are healers. And God works through you to bring healing because that's God's heart. And so these things all work together. Even in the Bible was Isaiah, when King Hezekiah was dying, they said, well, make up some figs and get get a little bit of medicine for him. And he recovered. And Paul said to Timothy, well, if you have a stomach problem, just take a little bit of wine for your stomach. And so uh, he was better, I guess. (laughs) Apparently, we don't know how that turned out. But there are times where there's natural grace and how God moves in these gifts of healings. Then there's miracles. Gifts are the gift of miracles. And this is defying the laws of nature. These are just miracles. These are just like, I, I can't explain it any other way. This is just God. And gifts of miracles that take place. These are workings of, the, the workings of the Spirit. And it seems to be a bit of a process. These are like workings, one, some of the translations say workings of miracles. So, It speaks to that there are are things that happen in the process of the miracle taking place. Sometimes it's a little more of a process. Sometimes it's instantaneous. But the workings of miracles. And so Jesus putting mud on eyes or whatever it may be. There's Jesus turning water into wine. He He involved the community at that wedding that day in the miracle. There are workings of miracles. But then sometimes there are instant miracles where Peter raised... Tabitha from her deathbed just instantaneously and then there's a couple more and uh, I didn't know if we were going to get all through these but we're going to get to the rest of them next week so come back next Sunday and get get more of them 
But let me just close with this. I will. I'll pick up the rest of these gifts uh, next Sunday. Then we'll look at Ephesians 4, some of the other ministry gifts that Jesus gives to the church. But these gifts are for us, friends. These beautiful gifts that the Holy Spirit gives to the church. And so these gifts, the, all of them, it says in verse 11, all these are the work of one and the same Spirit. And he distributes them to each one just as he determines. All of these are given by God, distributed to us as he determines. And friends, I'm just so thankful for the body of Christ here at First Assembly. And I want to say that these gifts are in operation. I just believe there's more. There's more for, for us. There's more for you. There's more for all of us to, to partner with the Holy Spirit in these different ways. But this week I, I was on a phone call and there was someone who was discerning some things and shared that, that discernment and then prayed prophetically over me. So gifts of discernment, gifts of praying prophetically. That happened this week. There was somebody who stepped up this week. There was an initiative that we're doing, a, a, a new initiative here at the church. And somebody stepped up this week and said, you know what, I'm going to sponsor that. I'm going to be part of that. It's a gift of generosity in action. There's something that happened this week. I prayed for someone and they received God's healing power in their life. Tuesday night, there's gifts in operation here at the church. All these incredible staff and volunteers that are serving in our kitchen, cooking up some of the best food you've ever had in Calgary on a Tuesday night, serving our TMS students and our TYMS students, serving with their gift. And then Alpha Marriage took place afterwards. And there's snacks and there's people setting up tables and rooms and these are service gifts that are in operation. It's beautiful to see. To heal a worship has been away the last couple of weekends. I don't think you've even noticed it. None of us have really noticed it because there are so many people serving in our worship ministry and tech ministry each week. Five services every weekend. Yet we are still able to go bless a youth conference in Newfoundland two weeks ago. And then Fort McMurray this past weekend with Billy Graham Ministries, so our, our, our worship team was out serving the greater body of Christ. It's incredible. So there are so many gifts that are in operation in this house. But may we not be satisfied. May we want more. 1 Peter 4.10 says that each of you should give or use whatever gift you've received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. You see, the Holy Spirit gives us gifts to give away. You see, without spiritual gifts, and here's the big why. You say, well, why are we talking about spiritual gifts? Let me just, let me just get this in your spirit. Without spiritual gifts, the church is just nothing more than another human organization. But the Spirit, the spirit at work, the spiritual gifts, this is what is so powerful and beautiful about what God is giving us. And so let me just give you these things very practically. And uh, maybe I'll refer to these next week too and I'll put them on the screen. But if you're interested, I'll just give them real quick. I want to encourage us to desire. Let's desire spiritual gifts. That's where it starts. Eagerly desire. 1 Corinthians 3.12. Desire the best gift. Say, Lord, what's the best gift for this situation? It's biblical to desire them. Secondly, discover them. We talked about this. First of all, I would encourage you to pray. Say, Lord... Show me some of these gifts that you've given me and how I can serve you and serve others. But we also have the belong class that happens where we help you discover your gifts. And then thirdly, develop them. And that's the best way is by serving. And then to deploy them, to give them away. But here's one thing I want to call us to as well as a church. One more D, dedicate them. Dedicate your gift to the Lord. Don't, don't just say, well, this gift is fun. I mean, I might use it here. It's not your gift just to say, well, I'm just going to use it here and there if I want to. No, there's something about dedicating your gift to the Lord that strengthens the body and builds up the church. Amen? Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand with me today as we conclude. Uh, we'll pick it up next week. So, Father, we want to thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence today, Lord. We thank you for this beautiful time of worship. Lord, this worship is not for us. It's all for you. It's all for you. It's all for you. 
Lord, we thank you for this time and your word. We thank you that you are maturing us, that you are building us as a body. Help us to hunger and desire for all that you have for us. Help us to be open to discovering our gifts and developing them, growing and serving and dedicating them to you for the the, the work of your kingdom, Lord, that we would just be all in, that our hearts would be all in as we dedicate these things to you. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. amen. Amen.